Here is a set of Motorola telephones. This is a pretty unusual set of telephones. I've never seen another instance of it besides this one. There is one other DEC 6 telephone that's of a similar design. It is a General Electric model. I forget what the number is offhand, but it too is a pretty large handset with uh, kind of like a trim line style form factor. And these are really unique because they do look a lot like a trim line telephone and the handsets are a pretty good size decent ergonomics which is unusual for modern equipment. Usually it's very small with a total neglect to ergonomics. Here is the model number. It is the H202 Now the manual lists three different, or no, five different numbers, H201 through H205. I suspect that the last digit likely indicates how many handsets the system would have shipped with. So I suspect that this handset, you know, the third handset might have been an add-on after the unit was purchased. So, very interesting telephones. I'm very excited to use these as I think they will provide a very similar experience to talking on a corded phone. So let's take a look at what we have here. Okay, that's just mumbo jumbo stuff that we don't need. I think a lot of this information is not particularly useful either. Yeah, not really. That's kind of all just generic stuff. All of the cradles and the main base are natively wall mountable, which is cool. And it would seem like it would mount really, you know, close to the wall. It wouldn't obtrude at all because the bracket is, you know, just right there. This is the expansion handset, and that model is H2. And you have the hook switch for changing it from base to wall mount. Okay, so let's begin here. Uh, the display language, we're not going to change that because it's already what I want it to be on, but we do need to set the date and time. Menu, date and time. The year defaults to 2010, which was a likely date of manufacture for these. I don't know how old these are, but I would suspect they're probably a product of the early 2010s would be my guess. I don't know how long they were made for. I suspect not long, given their scarcity. So today we are in 2022. And it is... Uh, excuse me. January 1st. And it's the... Oh no, it's not January 1st. It's January, which is the first month. And the day is 22. And the time is 3.01 p.m. Press volume or redial p.m. Okay. I'm going to clear out these uh, call logs here because they're all uh, uh, I'm not really sure I had to delete them off to get to that step in the menu, uh, or in the manual rather. Okay. They underscore it's 12 hour format. I wonder if there's a way to change it to 24. Okay. 
Okay. Looks all pretty intuitive. And you can pause the video and read that if you so desire to. Now there's definitely some similarity to VTech on these telephones, both the hardware and the software. The layout and the operating system and the icons and everything is, is very similar to VTech. I noticed that the the touch tone sound is pretty much identical to that of some of the newer Clarity phones, which I believe are also made by VTech. So I'm not sure who the OEM of these phones is. I don't know if, if it's Motorola themselves or if somebody else makes it for them. Motorola always used to be a very repeatable brand very well known brand of radios and I don't know if they still are I don't hear much about them anymore doesn't seem like any brands anymore really uh, themselves it seems like almost every product now the the companies just slap their name on something that somebody else made you can't even shop by a brand anymore because the brand don't mean anything so we have um, we have icons on here. We have a, it's like a voicemail icon on when the entry machine is turned on. Okay, so that that explains that. So it looks like the time will change. So the time is up there, and then if you turn it on, the time goes down there, which I like. I like having the time on the screen while you're on the call. You know, in case you have something to do later on or what have you, keep an eye on the time so you don't lose track of the time. All display icons behave behavior and description in the handset back CLD are the same as front CLD except the date timestamp. Oops. I don't have the time on there. That's kind of ridiculous that it doesn't have the time on there. Oh, it does have the time. Well, it has the time on these other ones that are sitting on the cradle. And as soon as you take the handset off the cradle, the time goes away. That's a little ludicrous. Hmm, okay. Okay, so only the one handset. The, uh, you can't, there's really no visual difference in the bases other than the presence of the find button. You know, the, the cradle versus the answering machine are almost identical. Same thing with the handset, only differences on the back. And the handsets can in fact go in two different ways. You can put it in like that, or you could put it in like that. I'm pretty sure you, you couldn't use this if it was wall mounted now. So you'd have to do it like that if it was on the wall. Okay, so we have Okay, those are all pretty simple uh, controls You have no messages It can be used while the handset is on the cradle Which is good and that handset does not have to reside on that cradle. You can put the answer machine handset on any of the cradles. Okay, so let's start with making a call. Or let's start with find first. Press 
to find Pedro the handsets. Okay. So this is kind of dumb because you have to this this can't be on the cradle to use the find button, and it's kind of dumb because you could very easily lose lose these two handsets, and this one is still charging. It's not very loud, but I don't think anything is very loud on these phones. Okay, so making the call. Enter the phone number and then press flash or speaker to dial the phone number. Speed dial calling. Press and hold a key from what? Oh, I see what they're saying. That's for the answering machine. Okay, so I think... I think the theory is that say if you wanted to call a speed dial number one, you would press and hold it. But we got an error tone because there's nothing in there. Okay. The speakerphone speaker is up here. Geese honk. Okay, let's go to the outside line. And let's make a call so we can hear what the sound quality is like. The ketones, uh, not the ketones, the DTMF tones are very quiet. Hello, Farmer Jones here with the uh, crop line update. First, thank you for joining us for our 74th Christmas tree season. That's not bad. It's a little bit on the quiet side, but there's a lot of distortion. First, let's take it down a notch. Passionately, that all of you have peace and good health for the holidays. And There's the no distortion on number four, but it's kind of quiet. The farm and winery are now closed for our annual winter break, and uh, the winery will reopen our outdoor wine stand for bottle sales later this winter. Please visit our website and the more information. Simply Jones. FamilyFarms.com. Our website also lists the Connecticut wine shops that carry our wine. Give them a call to check what Jones That's wine the lowest volume they have setting. In stock. And I'm going to gradually we do, go up. Uh, uh, wish you the very best as we move into the new year. Hope you stay in touch with our website. JonesFamilyFarms.com. It will help you make your plans for visiting our farm in 2022. Again, the winery starting later this winter. Strawberries. That's decent audio quality. Season November and December. If you do need to reach us, uh, speakerphone is definitely kind of weak, though, both in volume. The audio quality is okay, but it's not super lifelike to me. It definitely sounds like a telephone. All right, now I will call. I'm going to call the test and answer machine, and I'll record some messages so we know how good the pickup is on the handset. The messages have been recorded. Let's take a lesson. Three new messages and eleven old messages. Message one. Okay, this is testing message number one. 
and this is with the hand set on talk. I'm going to roam across the room to make sure that the signal is strong all the way across. I'm uh, speaking at a pretty normal volume level right now, directly into the handset, which is how you're supposed to talk on a phone. I'm all the way across the room now, so if it's clear still, then we're having no trouble with the reception. And now I'm speaking a little bit quieter. This is probably more like the volume at which I would talk on the phone. And not all phones pick up that well at this volume. Most corded phones usually do. Certain cordless ones do, but not all of them do. So we'll see how good it sounds. Okay, now I've switched over to the speaker phone, and I'm speaking at about the same volume and distance as I was initially when I first started recording. So this will give us a volume comparison between talk and speaker phone, how the pickup changes. Now I'm going to set the phone down on the table. I have set the phone down on the table, and I am speaking about one foot above the telephone. And I could foresee somewhat of a problem here, because when you put the telephone down on the table, you know, it don't stand vertically. It has to be flat. And so the microphone is facing up. And so as you walk away from the telephone, it will be like speaking into the side of the telephone, not into the telephone. And so the pickup may not be too good on these phones. So I, I will, let's find out. We'll start moving back. So now I'm about two feet away from the telephone. This is about three feet away from the telephone. Two feet from the telephone. And this is that distance right and it, it, it should still work. And if it doesn't work too much beyond this, I think that's okay. This is about as far as I would consider a real world Message two. This will be the hang up sound of the telephone hanging up with the button. Message three. This will be the hang up sound of the telephone hanging up into the cradle. End of messages. Okay, so the pickup is kind of poor. But somehow, I mean, sometimes that's just how phones are. Certain models are like that. The speakerphone pickup is exceptionally bad. Even speaking only about a foot away from the phone, the, the modulation was pretty low. So, that's that kind of stinks, but that's how it is. I guess one of the good things about it with the way to, you know, with the shape of the hand so you can get close to the microphone when you're talking on it and so kind of compensate for it but definitely not the greatest pickup on these okay dialing from the redial list that's pretty intuitive um, adding an entry to the phone book Let's add an entry to the phone book. Press this and press the menu. Enter name. Is it only capital letters? Seems like it. Oh, jeez. Well, I guess it's just be a, a bogus name then. It only store uh, uh, 16 characters. Okay. Storing a phone book entry as a one touch number. Press menu, uh, press the phone book. Press menu and then 
scroll down to speed dial. There's nine speed dials. Put that in speed dial one. Okay. Instead of scrolling to browse the person in America, okay, so you can search it by num by uh, letters, you know, that it begins with. So to call that number, I guess we'll press and hold one, and it answers, and it dials. Okay, that's pretty easy. Since I certainly don't want that in there, I want to delete that. It only stores dirty entries? That's pretty small. Okay. Okay, caller ID. The calls logs holds only dirty numbers. That too is a uh, kind of small. If one handset is used to view the calls log, the calls log, the icon on the other handset remains on. So that means you got to scroll through the call log and cancel it out on each handset, which is kind of a drag. Why is this call log empty? Never even looked at it on their phone. Okay, I don't really understand that, but maybe the new is, is some of the older calls that are on here because this this phone log is full. Uh, let's delete this this uh, log. Oh, well, that's not how you do it, I guess. Okay. Let's see. How do we delete it? Okay, so if you want to do a call back, you press pound to change the number. Let me call this up real quick just to get a number in there. Okay, so. So it doesn't count it as a as a missed call if you answer it. Um, let's see. Does it count it as a missed call on the other handsets? Doesn't seem like it. Okay. So this is the format button. Yeah. So it adds the area code which I don't have saved. So it's just zero zero zero. Um, let's see if we can put that. Um, area code in there. There we go. Area code here is uh, 203. So then I think this should add the Oh, you know why it's, it's doing that? Because that's the way the equipment here puts the area code as zero, zero, zero. And what I wanted to see is if, if the caller ID would take the name of the phone book entries. So let's go ahead and save this. How does one delete it? Clear.
and you get a space in there. One. Okay, so let's see how the number appears now. Does not match the name. Okay. Deleting a calls list entry. Press caller ID to enter the call log. Okay. So I want to delete the entire call list. Press and hold mute. Delete all call log entries select. And there they go. I'm going to delete that on all of them because it's have old phone numbers in them from the previous user. I'm not really understanding the note because um, I did not have to review all the entries before deleting it. Like this one has four missed entries and if I go in here and delete them all they seem to clear out just fine so I don't know why it's saying that I have to review the list before I can delete any entries or all entries from the list unless they're just saying you have to open it first which is kind of a given based on the way it's worded Okay, so this is uh, this is a layout of all the settings. Okay, we went through date and time. We went through the phone book. Let's look at the handset settings. Okay, the ring is infinite almost. These sound like um, maybe General Electric ring tone, so maybe this is a Thompson product. do a separate video and show all these rings. Okay, I'll just keep that one for now. Not, not super loud. I don't know what the range tone sounds like. I'll just unplug the bass and see. Okay, that's fine. Has English, French, and Spanish. Doesn't seem to make too much difference there. This play actually has pretty good contrast. It's quite readable. No, we don't need that. Okay. I'm going to unplug the bass, so let's see if we get a range tone. That's the range tone? That's inaudible. Ok, 
I just powered it back on. We'll see how long it takes for it to find it. When I turned these on originally, it took some time, but that, that was pretty reasonable. Okay. The base doesn't have too many settings. Tone pulse. That's pretty standard. Okay. Let's take a look at the answering machine. Answer. That's always what GE called it. So I, I wonder if this is a Thompson's product. Answer on. And the answer mode. Announce and record. Let's we'll start with announce only. Uh, for the video, let's go down to three. That's neat that it allows you to record two different announcements for each function, or two for the two functions. That's neat that it allows you to record two different announcements for each function, or two. Record announcement for announce only mode after the tone. Hello, no one is available to take your call. Thank you for calling. Okay, I tend to think there should be a better way to delete it than that, but let's go ahead and call it up and see what that sounds like. This should be on announce only after three rings. Ironically enough, the greeting sounds a bit overmodulated. Okay, so that works fine. Record announcement for record messages mode after the tone. Please leave your message after the tone. I kind of like the voice prompts in there before it does the recording. The voice is pretty clear and easy to understand. not change the setting. I find it highly ironic that the greeting appears to be overmodulated because the modulation when talking on it is quite too low. Vernout. Okay, so we have a message in there now. 
that was with the call screening off and now the message icon is flashing very very slowly indicating there is a new message that's not very visible at all you really would have to intentionally look at the phone for several seconds in order to you know, notice that there's a new message very very poor indicator of a new message especially because it flashes so slow you have to look at it for a good second or two jeez that's ridiculous Tone. It said recording on the screen well before it was actually doing the recording. It said recording on the screen well before it was actually doing the recording. Okay, that's kind of ridiculous that it plays it back. Uh, let's turn the call screen on just to see how it works. I'm curious if it will uh, screen to the handset. Now it says uh, TAM, which I guess would be telephone answering machine messages. Even that's not attention grabbing unless you're looking at the phone, but at least you can look at it and see it immediately. Okay, so let's see what kind of a call feedback freak show we're going to have. Each of the handsets says screening, like it's asking me if it's screening the call. The answer to its question is no, it's not screening the call that I can hear. So how do you turn it on? Menu? Does that turn it on? Hello? Hello? Okay, so now it's... Now it's screening through the earpiece, which is kind of interesting. In fact, that's very intriguing. I can't think of any other handsets that screen through the earpiece. Now the speakerphone is on. And because the speakerphone is so quiet, we don't appear to be having much of a, much of a call screening feedback freak show. Um, on this, on the base unit, I was able to, I guess I didn't turn it on. So you have to pick up each one and initialize it. Can you screen on multiple handsets? Can screen on multiple handsets. So the call screening requires input. I personally have no use for the call screening feature because the only time I would use an answering machine is if I'm not there to answer the phone. And consequently I wouldn't be able to hear the screening anyways. But I know a lot of people nowadays don't answer the phone until they screen the message, which is quite frankly very annoying because sometimes you call from a telephone that you don't regularly use, like in an emergency, for example, and then people don't answer the phone. It's a stinking joke. When the phone rings, answer it. Okay, so that, that call screening is very strange. Definitely unique, uh, unique way of functioning for sure. I guess it can stay on then, it, is, it doesn't really matter. Oh, you can turn remote access off, that's interesting. You can leave it on. Oh, the security code is four digits. Well, um, just for sake of ease, we'll go one, two, three, four. Okay, so um, that's that. 
So it has an option to reset all the settings. That's interesting. All right, let's see if we can get some more specifics on the answering machine here. Is this out of order? No, this is 16. And it just blasts into this. I don't know what it's talking about. Intercom. Okay. Let's see how the intercom works. Now it does not take the name of the handset and put it into this list, it only takes the number. So unless you know where each handset is located, you don't really know which handset you're calling. Uniden, on the, like on the 1580 for example, does put the name into the list, which is kind of an uncommon feature in other brands. It's a very simple thing, but it makes the intercom so much easier to use. All right, let's call handset number one. Oh, this is totally a Thompson product. That's how uh, notoriously the GE has done their ringers for the intercom. Testing, testing. This is the intercom test, over and out. Okay, that's working. Let's see, does it go on speaker? The intercom does go on speaker. Now that is a feature that Uniden does not have, at least on the 1580s. The intercom does not go on speaker. Okay, so the intercom works over and out. I think we can go to all handsets too. Okay, it's not very loud though. Ringer is not very loud at all. Okay, so during an intercom call, you will hear an alert tone if there's an incoming external call. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, so we're on this call now. I'm going to intercom handset three. It just says unable to call. Oh, because I'm not. Okay. I'm, you have it inverted. It needs to be on intercom, and then we get the outside call. So I'll put, uh, we'll mute these, and we'll put them both on speaker, and we'll listen very carefully. Here, I'm going to turn the ring off on this just so we can hear the, hear the interruption tone. Okay, so those two handsets are an intercom. I'm gonna go ahead and call these phones now. That that was the sound. That's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's very, you know, unobtrusive. But uh Oh, it actually went to the answer machine. That's interesting. These are not very good at alerting you of a call. It's very, very quiet. There's the ringer off icon. It's on the front and on the back. Okay, 
transferring an external coil Alright, so let's try to transfer an incoming call here, or an external call rather. So we're just intercom, the line's on hold. And then when this, I guess when this hangs up, the, the call transfers over. Okay. That works good. And we looked at the down mode already. Okay. We did the flash time up to five hands, it's registered to one base. So this um and originally unregistered handset. Let's see here. It doesn't say how to delete all the handsets from the base without a handset. That's kind of dumb that it doesn't delete the entries when you do re reset all settings. That'd be a very easy way to change ownership of the phone. Okay, so let's play answering machine. Okay, through the handset, press mute from idle mode. You have three new messages. Message one, Saturday, 12.42 a.m. Message two, Saturday, 12.43 a.m. It said recording on the screen well before it was actually doing the recording. Message two, erased. Message three. Okay, that's pretty easy to use. We turned everything on and off. Uh, let's take a look at it from the base, or the so-called the base. You have two old messages. There's no Message way to control the volume like Saturday, this. Saturday, 12, 42 a.m. I find it highly ironic that the greeting appears to be over-modulated because the modulation when talking on it is quite too low. The Message one erased. Message two Saturday twelve forty five AM. Okay, so let's see what kind of a call feedback freak show we're gonna have. Each of the handsets Message two erased. I'm kinda of bothered by it saying message erased but then displaying deleted. There's an inconsistency. Okay, so that works. The recording quality is pretty typical. Typical deplorable Digitan answering system quality. Okay, so we went through all that, the announcement number of rings. We did a recording the announce, uh, no I didn't record an announcement. Okay, let's record an announcement. Does this say how to put the the default recording back?
does not seem to say how to put the default recording back. Huh. Okay, it does say it right there, but I tried that. It didn't seem to work. And so I wasn't doing it right. I don't know. All right. Mode after the tone. Record a message or I'm not calling you back. Record a message or I'm not calling you back. Okay. Problem is, I turn the answer off. The outgoing message quality wasn't too terrible. I'm going to play back the messages remotely, or I'll play back this message remotely. Let's see if the quality is any better. I have found on a number of cases now, playing the messages back remotely seems to yield a better audio quality. Huh, that time it worked. Record a message or I'm not No, it didn't work. Back. Record a message. Okay. When recording the announcement. Okay, the announcement is recorded. When playing the message, pressing mute will delete it and the pre-recorded message will be played automatically. Okay, that's that to me is very clear. Answering machine. Announcement. Play. Press Record clear. And it just goes back to the previous thing. Record a message and it's still there. I don't understand that at all. Oh, I must not be understanding something or this is not correct. When it's playing. Okay, so it has to be here. Play. It just goes back. Doesn't delete it. So what I did before was I just recorded it. Record. Deleted. Record announcement for record messages mode. Deleted. What got deleted? The greeting? Recorded message. Nope. So we'll let it record for a brief second, then I'll stop it. After the tone. 
Okay, and that seemed to clear it out. Yeah. No, I don't know why that doesn't work. It absolutely is not working the way it's described here in the manual. Okay. Um, we'll look through all that. Now there it says that's for message playback, which is, that is working. Okay, that's all pretty easy. Flash if there are any message. Erase semi instrument messages will toggle within two seconds of memory full. Okay, remote access. Um, remote access is on. So to enter, dial your phone number from the phone. When you hear the announcement, press tone, which is the asterisk key, and then enter the four digit remote security code. Okay. Just give me a break. Okay, so the over enthusiastic answering machine voice does not sound any different through the phone line, and the quality of the messages was just as bad. So that didn't make any difference. Okay, that's we looked at that. Press the following keys, we looked at that. Look at that. So when it when it's not animated anymore, it's already full. So that's good to know. The phone book is full. That's all pretty simple. Dear, there's a risk of explosion if the battery is incorrect. I wonder if it states what the manufacturer is in here. One year warranty. On batteries, the capacity below 80% or a leak are covered. That's uh, kind of surprising. Usually, um, batteries aren't covered at all. I wouldn't expect the batteries to go below 80% you know, in one year. That's, that's pretty fast degradation.
Benetton Electronics International Repair Center. I don't know what that is. There's a frequency of deck 6, 1.921.536 MHz drew 1928.448 MHz, 5 channels, uh, 6 volts DCN, 2.4 volts nickel metal hydride battery pack, 550 milliamps. Huh. Manufactured, distributed, or sold by Benetton Electronics International Limited. What on earth is Benetton Electronics? I wonder if they absorbed like Thompson and everything at some point. I'm going to have to do some research on that. Well, I think that pretty much wraps up this video on these phones. I would have to have similar commentary on these as I do other products that are non-muted in. A lot of great features, a cool form factor. Um, although this one, the feature list is pretty slim. I kind of like the way the, the um, call screen works. Although I'm really just liking it in this case because it avoids a, a call screening feedback freak show. I have no use for call screening in a, in a practical application and I like the form factor it's pretty good screen layout is very easy to read although there's a lot of extra zeros there which creates clutter actually it lacks a lot of basic features like uh, the caller ID phone book match it's a small small phone book only 30 entries So, I don't know. It's a cool set. I'll definitely use it because the form factor is neat, but it is no unit end, that's for sure.